Good morning, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, if you'd like to take a moment to wish those that you're seeing close to a happy St. Patrick's Day and a happy Sunday. <laughs> great to have you uh, here with us this morning, whether you're in the building or you're watching uh, online, please do uh, take your seats. Before we turn our hearts uh, to worship, just a few announcements, all of which is in Pew News. Uh, Pew News is also online and there's some in the porch if you didn't get one on your way in. Our evening service is as normal this evening at 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock we're having a service of Holy Communion. But next Sunday, we're having a service of readings and hymns for the Passion, and that's at seven o'clock next Sunday evening. Looking to the week ahead, um, you'll see that our Easter or General Vestry is on Tuesday evening. That's in the venue in Crozier Hall at 7.30. And that's where we elect a, a new vestry for the coming year. But we also look at what has been done in the year past and where we want to take things uh, in the future as well. So please do uh, come along uh, and hear that on Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. On Wednesday, Mark's Men, Cafe Hope, Choir Practice, our Lent service and bowling club is as normal. But you'll see a little meeting at quarter past eight on Wednesday evening. We're hoping to form a men's group <clears throat> within our parish. So if you'd be interested in helping form that, or even if you have any ideas uh, around it, please do come along, because that's at quarter past eight, uh, just after our Lent service. On Thursday morning, the ladies' walking group uh, are out walking as normal. They're meeting at 10 a.m. just outside the Crozier Hall. And you'll see that our women's ministry alive is meeting this Thursday evening at 7.30. We'll be in the venue where we will have a speaker from SD Bell, the tea company in Belfast. They'll be coming to give us a talk on the history uh, of tea. So even if you're a coffee drinker, please do uh, come along and hear that really uh, great little talk. If you have any questions, just ask me uh, after the service. Next Friday evening, uh, then Glow, our youth club, is meeting at 7.30 in the Crozier Hall. Easter is fast approaching. The eggs are all on the shelves of our supermarkets and have been for some weeks. And there's plenty happening within the parish as we approach Easter. You'll see that we have a Monday, Thursday service and meal. That's the 28th of March at 7 p.m. If you'd like to come along, there's sign-up sheets uh, in the porch. We need people to sign up in advance just so that we know uh, for catering and numbers uh, how many we need to provide for. You'll see on Good Friday, we have our three-hour service, uh, and that's Words from the Cross. And you can pop in at any time. You don't have to stay uh, the whole time, but it is Bishop Harold Mil Miller, the former Bishop of the Diocese of Down and Dremore, who is coming to speak at that this year. You'll also see details about our Easter dawn service, our Easter morning breakfast, and on the back of Pinnies, we have all the details of our services happening uh, during Holy Week, and it'll be posted online uh, this week as well. So as we come to our service this morning, we take a moment to still our hearts and our minds from the busyness of life and, and all that's going on and recenter our scattered senses on the living God. Sing to the Lord all the world, for the Lord is the mighty God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done marvellous things. Proclaim his glory among the nations, and shout for joy to the Lord our King. We stand together as we sing with joy our opening hymn, Number 643, Be Thou My Vision.
come to a time in our service where we say sorry to God for the things that we have done that we shouldn't have done or the things that we left undone. And so we sit or neighbor as we bring them before God our Father, a forgiving God. Lord God, our maker and redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. For we have heard for ourselves the good news of Christ, but have not shared it with our generation, nor taught it to our children. Be merciful. Lord, forgive us and help us. For we have failed to bring the love of Christ to the needy in our society. Be merciful. Lord, forgive us and help us. For we have not loved you all, with all of our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Be merciful. Lord, forgive us and help us. O God, forgive us for our lack of love, and in your mercy make us what you would have us be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord who is merciful and gracious, slow to be angry and full of love, who will not accuse us forever, nor be angry with us always, who does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our wrongdoing. Have compassion on us as the Father has compassion on his children and forgive us our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect for St. Patrick's Day. Almighty God, in your providence, you chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light and knowledge of your word. Grant that walking in that light, we may come at last to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand together as we sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. I'm going to invite Ellie May who is going to give us our reading this morning. Bible reading from Hebrews chapter 11, including verses 8 to 11 and 17 to 30. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who is past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. (coughs) Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as they leaned on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses, his parents, hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded his grace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. 
By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Ellie May. We're going to stand together as we sing hymn number 134 from Thanks and Praise. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you. Mm. We come before God's word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is so freely available to us. And Lord, as we come to learn from it now and to learn from the life of your servant Patrick, Father, we pray that our ears would be opening to hearing more about you, our eyes open to see you, and our hearts ready to receive the encouragement for our faith and the challenge to stand firm in faith that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Does anybody have a hero? Someone maybe that you look up to? Maybe it's a celebrity. Maybe it's someone that you've seen on TV or that you read in a magazine. Or maybe it's someone even in your family. But growing up, we all have heroes. People that we look up to, people that we admire. 
And sometimes we talk about heroes of faith. And Ellie May read a passage for us not so long ago that talked a lot about those heroes of faith. But today we're specifically talking about one called Patrick. Now when it comes to the story of Patrick, the truth is even more exciting than the myth. You've maybe heard that he's known for driving all the snakes out of Ireland. Some people want to make the holiday all about green drinks and leprechauns and pots of gold and and shamrocks and even the colour green. But the reality is, the holiday isn't about any of those things. So let me tell you a story. A long, long time ago, in a country called England, a little baby was born and his name was Maywin Socket. He grew up as a normal little boy, albeit a normal boy with a strange name. Maywin went to school, he even went to church. And though his father was a deacon in the church and had taught him God's ways, Maywin had become a careless and rebellious young man. He says in his short autobiography, I did not indeed know the true God. And as a young man, he was kidnapped by pirates And the pirates took him to Ireland. There he was sold as a slave and he was feeding pigs and sheep. The people there spoke a different language and they also didn't know about God. They practiced a religion known as paganism and they prayed to things like trees. And so it was that this boy, Maywin, went about serving his master, feeding pigs and sheep and learning a new language. Maywin was very far from home and he was very lonely. He remembered when he learned what he learned in church about how God loved him and God always promised to be with him. So he began talking to God. He talked to God when he went to bed, when he worked, when he ate. And in fact, he talked to God all the time. He was praying to God over a hundred times a day. And so he grew very close to God and God took care of him and kept him safe. In the sixth year of captivity, God spoke to Maywin in a dream and told him that his time to be released was near. This was followed by another dream where God told him that his ship was ready and it was time to leave that night. So Maywin left the west of Ireland and walked 200 miles to the east coast of Ireland. After arriving, there was a ship waiting on the coast just as God had shown him. He approached those on the ship and said, I am the one you have been waiting for. But they did not know who he was talking about and refused to allow him on board. Dejected, he went away and started praying. He started questioning God. And while he was praying, one of the sailors returned and invited him to go with them. As they were heading back to Britain, they informed Maywin that he would now be their slave. Maywin had another dream, and God told him that he would be released from this captivity in two months. Maywin told his captors all about the one true God, and he used the three-leaf shamrock to explain the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But soon they ran out of food, and their bellies began to rumble, and they got very hungry. They told Maywin, you claim to know the one true God. Why don't you pray to him that he would not allow us to starve? Maywin replied, why don't you pray to him yourself? After praying, a herd of pigs came out of the forest, which sustained them for some time. They began to fear the God that Maywin believed in. And Maywin was released on his 60th day of captivity, just as God had promised. Now, he eventually returned home to his family. They thought he had long gone and wasn't coming back. In fact, they hardly even recognised him. Once they were convinced of who he was, they greatly rejoiced. And he spent many years back home in England. One night he had a dream that the people of Ireland were calling him to come back and tell them about God. His family discouraged him from going, telling him, you're a runaway slave, they'll capture you. His friends discouraged him as well, and even those close by to him. But Maywin got his education, 
And because of his hard work and dedication to God, he became a bishop. This also meant that he got a new name, Patrick. And at the age of 46, Patrick returned to Ireland. He was not well received when he first went to Ireland, but through the next 29 years, much was accomplished. He baptised 120,000 people, planted some 300 to 700 churches. He converted pirates, pagans, paupers and princes, and he was credited with performing thousands of miracles in the name of God. Now there's a lot more that we could say about Patrick, the missionary to Ireland, but ultimately what made him the man of God that he was, was that he was able to accomplish this only through God himself. Jesus was his source, his strength, his motivation. So St. Patrick isn't about wearing green. It's not about singing, oh Danny boy, or singing top or saying top of the morning to you. It's not about green drinks. It's about God using a simple sinner to bring salvation to an entire culture of people. So just what is worth grasping as we look into the life of St. Patrick? March 17th is the date of his death and the date of his death is celebrated throughout Ireland but also throughout the world as well. But how does it relate to us having faith today in the here and the now? St. Patrick is known as an Apostle of Ireland. He has been deemed a saint by the church, meaning he is a person in whom Christ lives. He wasn't perfect, but he served a perfect God. And he's known for spreading the good news for Jesus to all. When Ellie May wrote he read Hebrews 11 for us, it talks about heroes of faith. And all of these great, amazing things that God did through men and women who had faith in him. It talks about Abel offering a more acceptable sacrifice. How Enoch was taken up. How Noah built an ark. How Abraham left his home in Ur and followed God leading to a place he didn't know. And the list goes on and on. By faith they followed God. They did God's will. They accomplished God's purpose for them. They did amazing things for God. And at the same time, if we look further at verses 35 to 38, it says that they suffered, that it wasn't all good, that sometimes they had really difficult days. And I think we can add Patrick to that list, who through many dangers, toils and snares, brought the gospel to Ireland. We are truly surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Great men and women who by faith were used for God to bring about his plans, his purposes and his will. Most of the time through ordinary means or just through being faithful of not compromising on the truth. So what's the point? What does knowing this do help you and me right here, right now and today? Well, in Hebrews 12, a little further on from where we read this morning, verses 1 to 2 say, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. There's a little word at the start of that passage. It says, Therefore, in other words, because of all the things that happened in Hebrews 11, and since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of people and witnesses that have stood for God in tough times, here's what we should do. It says we should lay aside every weight, every sin that clings, clings so closely to us, and run with endurance the race that is set before us. We can look back at these men and women of faith, we can look back at the believers who have gone before us and we can see what God did through them, with them, and we can see how they endured and how they were persecuted. We can see that all of these folks weren't any different than you and me. They were just like us. They needed food, they needed sleep, they had things they enjoyed doing. If football had been invented, they probably would have supported a great team like Liverpool. 
And they were also sinners, flawed people, and yet God used them. So it's really not about them. It's about Jesus. They serve as an inspiration of what someone who is solely devoted to God can do. But it's Jesus working through them. It's all about Jesus. He is the object of our faith. He is the one who makes it all possible. He's, he went to the cross for the joy that was set before him. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. So I'm thankful we have a holiday when we can remember the missionary to Ireland. I wish more people understood what it was really about, but I'm thankful that we have a day to remember a faithful man of God. But I'm even more thankful that we have the opportunity every day to remember, praise and worship and learn about Jesus. Because as interesting as Patrick was, he couldn't do anything without Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 says, Follow my example as I as I follow the example of Christ. And that's what Patrick did. He exemplified everything that Jesus done. He was a man of prayer. We know he prayed over a hundred times a day. He was a man of patience. He had to wait 24 years to see God's plan come to pass. He was a man of perseverance. He pushed on even though others tried to stop him. Patrick, he was all about Jesus. He loved Jesus, he served Jesus, and his goal was that Christ would be seen in all that he did. So may that be our goal as we go out to school, as we go out to work or wherever we are during the week. May people see Jesus through all that we say and all that we do. I'd like to end our talk this morning by praying a prayer that Patrick once prayed. And it's called his Lorca or his breastplate. And you've probably heard it before. But if you just want to close your eyes, you can say the words along with me in your head or you can just uh, close your eyes. He wrote, Christ with me, Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me, Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right, Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every person who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Amen. We're going to sing together hymn 611 to reflect the prayer that Sarah just read. St. Patrick's Prayer. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me. So if you can, would you please stand? Thank you. 
Would you please be seated? We're going to talk with Jesus together in a time of prayer. So sitting or kneeling, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to be gathered together for our family service today. Be close to us and help us feel the presence of your Holy Spirit during our prayer time. We thank you for our church, for the people who worship here, and for the organizations that serve you. Help us always to remember, Lord, that Faith in you is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do and not see. May we embrace St. Patrick's example to follow your word in faith, to understand that the promises you have made will be fulfilled as a heavenly reward for serving you and others through lives of faith in this sinful world. Thank you for being St. Patrick's source of strength guiding and helping him achieve his earthly pursuits. May his ministry and missionary life, his forgiveness of others, his commitment to prayer and determination to bring your word to many be an encouragement to us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, we pray for Archbishop John guide and support him in his role and we pray for the churches near us and right across the Church of Ireland. We pray today that your wisdom will guide all clergy and ask for your spirit to be their sustainer and guide. Fill them with joy for the service into which you call them. May they experience your love today. This Sunday we pray in particular for the parish of Clockerney Drum Achille and Seskinor. Bless and support diocesan reader Sarah Cathers and parish reader Hazel Gibney. And dear Lord, may the vacant rector position be filled soon. And across the diocese of Armagh today, we pray for all who serve on select vestries and who work for the parish and community. And then praying for the Anglican Communion we pray for the church in Wales. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, during these weeks when international conflict remains an ever-present reality across our media, we continue to think and pray for the situations in Ukraine and North Africa. We pray also for the countries and people affected by famine, disease, migration, gun crime, the impact of earthquakes, erupting volcanoes, storms and flooding, and all forms of political unrest. Lord, guide those in positions of responsibility to have calm heads and caring hearts, and to seek dialogue first as a means of preventing the pain and strife that results from violent interventions. Father, at this time of continuing extreme crisis, we cry out to you for all who suffer in Gaza, Palestine and Israel today. We pray for your precious children, traumatized and in fear for their lives, for civilians in Gaza, Palestine and Israel, that they would be protected and that every life would count and be cherished and remembered. For medical and emergency personnel, all those working in hospitals and the community to help people, risking their own lives to save those of others. For the families of the bereaved, for those who have seen images they will never forget, for those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. Bless and bring safety to the people of these countries, along with your care and support to those directly affected by pain and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And turning our prayerful attention to those Close to us in need at this time, we pray for those who are sick and experiencing illness. We pray for anyone in hospital 
or at home facing uncertainty, doubt, pain, their own personal sense of suffering and anxiety. May they feel your closeness, Lord, seek your loving support when they need it most, and have confidence that you remain alongside them during times of distress. Father, we pray for those who are dying, the bereaved and those grieving whom we know. May they experience your closeness, Lord, and we hold before you now anyone from our parish, as well as others known to us, who have recently been bereaved. And during a few moments of silent prayer and reflection, we ask that you support those whom we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, bless all health and social care workers, all teachers and pupils, all farmers, business operators, shop and factory workers, carers, and those who serve their community in different ways. Bring peace and comfort to families who are facing relationship difficulties. Protect the vulnerable prone to neglect and abuse, trauma and loss, guiding those in positions of oversight and care. Bless all parents and grandparents this week. Fill them with love, patience and kindness for each other and help them fulfil their responsibilities despite any challenges they may face. And finally, we ask for your blessing on all of our young people, Lord. Protect them, guide and encourage them. And we ask that you continue to lead and nurture all who participate in REACH mentoring across our schools. And during these 10 days of prayer for REACH mentoring, Father, bless all the young people involved, their mentors and all the schools as well as churches like St. Mark's who give support to this vital work. And Heavenly Father, we pray that the words of St. Patrick's Prayer may give us all strength and encouragement today and in the days ahead. Christ be with us. Christ be beside us. Christ be before us and behind us at our right hand and our left. Christ be with us everywhere we go. Christ be our friend forever and ever. Amen. Accept these our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We've come to a time in our service where we like to say happy birthday uh, to those who have any birthdays in March. So can I have some helpers uh, to help me hand out some freddos? I'm hoping there's not many birthdays so that I can eat the rest of these. <laughs> do you want to do that side over there? Just put your hand up if you have a birthday in, in March. More helpers coming. Harry, do you want to do it over there? And Anna, do you want to go upstairs? Yeah. Anyone else come to help? No? There's a good few in the middle as well. Put your hand up nice and tall just so that the kids can see. Um, I don't want you to mess out in your photo. Some at the back, Kelly May. Have you got enough freddos?
Thank you so much. You just want one? Okay, there you go. That is, that's great. Thank you so much. I think Anna's back on her way down now. Thank you. That's great. So if it's your birthday in March, we would like to sing happy birthday to you. So let us sing happy birthday. As we draw our service to a close this morning, there's tea, coffee and treats down in the Crozier Hall afterwards. So please do uh, go down the hill uh, and into the hall and catch up with one another um, over a cup of tea. So as we go uh, from this place this morning, God who in days of old gave to this land the benediction of his holy church, fill you with his grace to walk faithfully in the steps of Patrick and to bring forth fruit for his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. We stand together as we sing our closing hymn, number 581, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.